Hi, my name is Paul Roberts, and today I want to talk with you about the most important single subject in Shin Buddhism, and that is the word and the concept of Shinjin. Now, when I first encountered Shin Buddhism, I read many, many books and visited many, many websites, and I have to tell you that I literally could not understand exactly what people were talking about when they talked about Shinjin. The language they used, the concepts they used, the ideas they had were all very murky and difficult to understand. And one thing I've come to know about the true teaching of the Pure Land Way, otherwise known as Shin Buddhism or Jodo Shinshu, is that it is not supposed to be difficult to understand. It was designed by Amida Buddha in his pre-Buddha form, his Dharmakara Bodhisattva, to be useful for the most ignorant and unlearned and unlettered people in the entire world. So if the ideas being transmitted are not simple and easy to understand, they are not a good explanation of Shin Buddhism. So to understand Shinjin, let's go back in time to times that the Buddha Shakyamuni describes in the larger sutra. He talks about the fact that the universe as he knows it is actually trillions and trillions and trillions of years old, much older than we think of uh, in terms of the Big Bang, which only goes back about 12 billion years as far as we can guess, and much more vast than the boundaries of our own physical universe. Indeed, the words of the Buddha Shakyamuni are very much congruent with the kinds of things that theoretical physicists and astrophysicists are talking about today when they talk about parallel universes and all kinds of things that are very difficult for us even to comprehend. The Buddha really encompassed all those things in his teachings. And the reason it's important to go back in time is to recognize that there have been countless Buddha worlds, countless Buddha worlds, each of them with its own Buddha. And in these Buddha worlds, there have been countless, innumerable, inconceivable numbers of sentient beings, all going through the same cycles of birth and death that we are going through here on our little earth, all rising and falling, taking birth in the various realms of existence, the six realms of samsara, or else the four noble higher realms of, of Buddhism, as described by Shakyamuni. And these are things that are going on and have been going on forever. And the point of this is, is that for the longest time, longer than we can even conceive of, the only way people or sentient beings had of advancing on the path towards Buddhahood was by doing one of the many self-powered practices that the Buddha talks about in so many of his writings. This was the only way people had, the only way sentient beings had to make progress in this journey of countless lives. And the fact of the matter is, is that this is the most inefficient and ineffective way for people to actually make permanent progress on the paths. We know from the teaching that there are ten realms of existence, six lower realms, including the human realm in which we are born, and four higher realms, the realm of the Sravaka, the realm of the Prateka Buddha, the realm of the Bodhisattva, and finally the highest realm, the realm of the Buddhas. And we also know from the teaching that it is not possible to stabilize one's progress, even if you are serious about enlightenment. In any of these realms, you are liable to have the experience we call retrogression. You're climbing up the mountain of enlightenment and then something terrible happens and all of a sudden you fall all the way down to the bottom again or halfway down to the bottom again and you climb up again and you fall down again. And this problem of retrogression is a problem for all sentient beings on the path to awakening until you've reached the eighth of the ten bodhisattva stages. And so you find this panorama of existence with countless human beings, countless human beings making attempts to climb the mountain of enlightenment, to become enlightened, to become a Buddha, and then they encounter some difficulty or some, some temptation, some obstacle along the path, 
and lose all the progress they've made, fall all the way down to the bottom again. This happened to me in my own life, and that's one of the reasons I speak about it so passionately. I was on the path. Becoming a Buddha or an enlightened being was important to me. I was doing various sorts of self-powered practices, some which I learned in Buddhism, some which I learned before I became a Buddhist. And then some terrible, terrible things happened in my life. Terrible tragedies, personal family tragedies. And I was not able to keep the ground that I had gained. I lost all my ability to meditate. I lost all my ability to think right thoughts. I lost all my ability to see the view, the great view that one gets when one is in a meditative state uh, along with the Buddhas. And so this is how things were for the longest time. And then along comes this man He's talked about in the larger Sutra of Amida Buddha. His name was Dharmakara. He was a king. And as a king, he awoke his own aspiration for enlightenment. And he decided to give up his kingdom and become a monk. And when he became a monk, he went to see the Buddha of his time and place. And he made vows. And he told the Buddha of this time and place that he was going to find another way for sentient beings to become Buddhas at long last. And that's exactly what he did. The biography of Dharmakara is talked about in the larger sutra, the sermon Shakyamuni Buddha gave on Vulture Peak one day in front of thousands of people. And in that biography, Shakyamuni Buddha describes the spiritual biography of Dharmakara as a monk who took birth over and over again committed always to helping other beings in one way or another. And over the course of many, many lifetimes, not one, not two, but many lifetimes, he increased his karmic merit to the point where he became the great bodhisattva, the greatest of all bodhisattvas, Dharmakara was. And he became this great bodhisattva full of a tremendous, tremendous transcendental power. And what he did as he became a great bodhisattva was he went and visited countless Buddhas in their countless Buddha lands. And he consulted with all of them, asking them about the good and the bad of their Buddha lands and what they were doing to help people become enlightened. And after he had done this tremendous amount of consultation over a tremendous period of time, ages and ages, he came up with his own idea for his own Buddha land and his own way of helping people to accomplish the process of enlightenment and become Buddhas themselves. And this was the new way. This was the new way that he came up with. He said that if anyone wants to become a true Buddha, all that he or she needs to do is entrust his or her karmic destiny entirely to me. And if he does that, I will cause him to take birth in my Buddha land. And when he does, or when she does, he or she will immediately become a Buddha. This new way of Buddhahood was based not on the works of one's own efforts, but on simple, profound, an absolute faith in the Buddha named Amida. That's who Dharmakara became when he took control of his own Buddha land. And so what happens is, when a person awakens his or her aspiration for Buddhahood today, and he listens to the Dharma of true Shin Buddhism, the Dharma of Master Shinran and Master Renyo, he hears Master Shinran declare that nothing that we can do is going to enable us to become Buddhas. This is called the second pillar of true Shin Buddhism. I've got another video on that. If you haven't listened to it, please do. That would leave all of us in a state of hopelessness, except for the third pillar of true Shin Buddhism, which we also have a video on, which says that if we entrust ourselves entirely to Amida Buddha, 
without reservation, taking full and final refuge in him. What he will do is this. First of all, he will give us his infinite store of his own karmic merit so that we're not dependent on our gradual transformation based on the good and the evil karma we've accrued over countless past lives. But instead, miraculously and inexplicably, really, inconceivably, our karmic merit is now the karmic merit of Amida Buddha himself. And the second thing that Amida Buddha does for us is he gives us a faith mind consciousness. So somebody who has entrusted himself to Amida Buddha and has received Amida's gift of Shinjin has received this new kind of consciousness the consciousness that he or she is already saved by Amida and that at the end of his or her life he or she will surely without fail and without exception be born in Amida's pure land and immediately take birth as a true Buddha. I and countless other people have heard this message We've listened deeply to the message, which is the only practice in true Shin Buddhism. Again, we have another video on that. And as we listened deeply, we cleared the channels of faith. We answered all our intellectual questions. We resolved all our emotional issues and doubts. And we believed and do believe in the message of Shakyamuni Buddha and Master Shinrin and Master Renyo. And believing that message without any doubt whatsoever, we entrusted ourselves entirely without reservation to the greatest of all the Buddhas. And as a result, he himself gave us this inconceivable gift of diamond-like Shinjin. Now this happened in my own life back in 2004 after I met my Dharma mentor Aiken Kobai Sensei and straightened out my own questions and got answers to the questions that I had. And ever since then I can tell you I've had many ups and downs in my life as everybody does, as Master Shinran himself did. But I have never for one single moment regardless of how I have felt, whether I've been happy or sad or angry or afraid or depressed or subject to any of the countless blind passions or dealing with my own cravings or diversions or my own remaining delusions and obscurations, my own ignorance, my own egotism, the chattering of my monkey mind, I've never had a single solitary doubt about my salvation. I know that this is the last lifetime for me as a non-Buddha. I know this is the last ride for me on the crazy train of life in samsara. That's what Shinjin is. It is the gift of Amida Buddha to those who entrust themselves without reservation to him. It enables them to say, Namu Amida Butsu. Thank you, Amida Buddha. I know I have been saved by Amida Buddha. I know I will become a Buddha at the end of this life. For that reason, regardless of how I feel from day to day, I am thankful, I am grateful for the salvation given to me by Amida Buddha. That is what Shinjin is. It is the most important thing in the world because it is the thing that determines your karmic destiny and brings you to the threshold of Buddhahood at long last.